Okay, so here we go. Here we get some backstory on alchemy. Okay, so here we go. Here we get some backstory on alchemy. Okay, in the last episode, the villain, he talked about how Edward had broken that rule, and that's what cost him his arm and Al his body. Hey! I'm gonna cut this out from now on, but I'm gonna be watching the opening each time, I think. You gotta watch the opening, it sets the mood. Hell yeah. Oh no, I just realized I memorized the opening of Avatar. Should I memorize this song too? <laughs> That'd take forever. I mean, I got this episode and then 60 more, so maybe I can do it. The Philosopher's Stone, right. And the villain had it last episode, right? Oh cool, we'll get some, some backstory. Oh, they were child prodigies. Those are no doodles. Pretty good. それが嬉しくて俺たちは錬金術にのめり込んだ。It's already interesting seeing the difference between Ed and Al and how they they're taking it. It seems like Ed is lost in his sorrow about his mom. Al is like looking out for Ed. Al seems like he has a really good heart. He seems like a really sweet kid. And you can tell he loves his brother a lot. You can sort of feel his concern for him in this scene. I was mean. Oh, that started early. This runt thing. Yeah, so we obviously got fixated on it. Al seems to be more along for the ride. Maybe it's because Al still has someone to lean on. You know, he can lean on his older brother. Whereas for Ed, there's no ceiling. There's there's no one to look up to. And his other arm. It hurts even more considering what I just said about how Al's just sort of the victim. He's just trying to make his brother happy. I mean, obviously he's mourning the loss of his mother too and wants to see her again. And he cares a great deal, but it really feels like this is Ed's initiative. Edward is the one who's driven solely by his feelings of loss. And so he led his younger brother into that, which is tragic. Like if things weren't already bad enough. That feeling when you just want to bring your dead mother back, but instead you, you meet God and he traps you in the tree of life. How was your day today, Edward? You know, pretty normal, just travel through the live stream. Is that his mother? Holy shit. Crap. That was horrific because he got what he wanted, but it's like a, uh, like a, the devil's bargain, you know, he got his mother back, but it was the most gruesome image of his mother. And then he lost, the, like the only person he had in his life who still loved him, and he's responsible for that. And he lost his leg, and I guess the reason he lost his arm is because that was the, the price to bring Al back to bind him to the suit of armor. But what's scary, and I think also very revealing for Edward, is that when he met that being or whatever it was, he's just not accepting the reality. Like, in his mind, he just hasn't gone far enough, you know? It's like he's doubling down on, on this thinking. So even despite this tragedy, I feel like he might not have learned the, the lesson, you know? The feeling behind this is really moving to me because, in a way, it speaks to the frustration of not being able to bargain with the universe. 
you, know, you can't bargain with the laws of reality. There are so many ways you can respond to tragedy. You can become resentful. You can deny reality. You can, you can lie to yourself. You can seek other things to make yourself feel better. But all of those do take a toll. I already love Al so much. He's such a good kid. He doesn't deserve that. And he's still going to be loyal to his brother, no matter what. Full Metal Alchemist. So we're back to the present. How old are they now? Yeah, so even they're aware of some of the horrors of the things the army has done. That's true. And very literally in some ways as well. Do even the local people not like soldiers? Yeah, that was a pretty amazing last minute move. さまざまな特権や最高レベルの研究が可能となるのです。この子たちが元の体に戻る方法もあるいは。あれは。あれは人間なんかじゃなかった。Oh and for Ed, who's just lost everything and has experienced actual hell in some ways, this is a lifeline. This is like the best lifeline he can see. The, the old woman correctly knows that it's a danger for him because it's going to be more of the same. And this guy's sort of playing him a little bit, right? Like, he's saying exactly the right things to give them hope. But he's interested in their power. I'm guessing this is going to be important. I have a feeling they're going to meet again. Yeah, of course he will. Why does he seem so excited by that? That's a hell of a backstory. <laughs> even if it's for the wrong reasons, or even if he hasn't quite figured things out yet, you gotta admire the drive. I love it when, like, people defy the odds. So I guess he was able to rehab in one year. Yeah, for good reason. Oh. <laughs> Oops. So he actually did take something away from that experience. He gained some kind of insight into alchemy. I'm hoping that comes up again and gets explored in more detail because I really want to know what that was about, that experience, with the truth. <laughs> This is going to be a love interest for him. Not impressed. Don't need it. So I guess this means he passes. Bold move. Ambitious. <laughs> yeah, he does. Interesting. Oh, did he do that? That's awesome. Right, he's a swordsman. Definitely making him look cool. Hmm. 
アルの体を元に戻す手がかりが賢者の意志Man, these episodes feel like movies. They're, they're so packed. They're like self contained stories almost. Alright, l so that cleared a lot up and gave a lot of really important emotional resonance to their characters. It was really tragic, the first part of this episode. I feel for Ed, you know, like it's, it's not just that he's a stubborn kid who's ambitious. He's trying to like undo his traumatic past or fix mistakes that he made by not being able to reconcile reality with what he wanted. And then Al, poor Al, the kid who just loves his brother. And will do anything for him. Even despite losing his body and losing all the same things that Ed lost and more, still is there for him unconditionally, still supports him, still cares about him deeply. It also adds some depth to the reason why Ed doesn't seem really concerned with the political matters or the military matters. He's there because he has a goal. He has a very clear objective, which is to find the Philosopher's Stone and to fix the damage that he's done. And so that allows him to sort of turn a blind eye to the evils of the military, which are obviously there. So that's the first two episodes down. It's, it's rich. I can't wait to see. Once we've established the characters where the story goes, I can feel there's a lot of potential here for really great things. And it's a really good sign that I'm already in love with the characters, at least the two brothers. And it's cool that the, the king is such a badass. I'm guessing that's going to become a bigger deal later. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you very soon for episode three.